Hello there and welcome to a special Halloween Horror Nights edition of our Disney Kind of Life. Coming at you from opening weekend of Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios Orlando, Florida. We're going to do it all. We got scare zones, we got mazes, we got food, we got a nightmare show. You can hear some of the scare actors behind us already, the icons, sinister and surreal behind me. So we're excited to be back in the fog. It's been far too long, so we're going to go dig into this thing. Join us in our Disney kind of life at Halloween Horror Night. Universal Orlando welcomes Halloween Horror Nights 33. Here we go into the duality of fear scare zone and it looks like Surreal is out. So let's go say uh, hi to her or something. I don't know. We'll try. Uh, she's pretty loud. And over here, we have Sinister. I think I'm a little partial to Sinister myself. kind of cruising down the streets of, of New York and uh, I see for the love of theme parks over there doing his thing. There goes Ryan. And here we go this way. We're kind of making our way back to the food area. We're going to try the insidious food. We're getting the red door and the eggs in the further. They don't have the alcoholic drinks tonight, but they do have non-alcoholic versions, I believe. All right, here we have the last key pop. It was actually the last key pop too. They're actually running out of food at the premium scream event. Um, the into the eggs, into the further eggs are already out. We wanted those, but this is the last key pop, literally. Red velvet cake pop with chocolate key. And then over here, we have the red door. So the red door is a potato and onion filled hand pie. And it is a vegan option. So the red key is $6.99 and the red door is 9.49 so here's the red door it's a meat pie or no sorry it's vegan um, it has onion in it and uh, we're gonna bite it it's a little dry just to don't warn you maybe as i get into the middle a little more maybe it'll be a little juicier but it's definitely dry it's got a good taste to it though definitely it's onion forward so if you like onion, you're gonna like this one. But um, for $9.49, I don't know if I would buy this one again. I really wish they had the into the egg, into the further eggs. I was really looking forward to trying that one. But um, this one's not bad considering it's free for the event tonight. But overall, it's a little dry and it's just kind of bread and onion together. But um, not bad, not great, just not bad. All right, here we go. We got the, the, the door, the door cake pop with the chocolate key. I'm just gonna bite into it. The key's trying to slide off because it's humid tonight, um, but I'll, I'll be quick. Okay. It's a lot more moist than I thought it would be. It's actually pretty good. Um, and it's a big cake pop. This is not like your Starbucks lollipop cake pop. It's a full on cake and it's really good. Kind of gets you into the middle of that. And then, um, the key is chocolate. I'm not gonna touch it because it's melting. Uh, Cause it is hot, it's Florida, so we're used to that. But I'm gonna try to bite the key, let's see. So for about $7, not a bad dessert. Um, 
You can tell it wants to melt. There's a lot of condensation on it. Like I said, it is warm tonight, but this one's good. Uh, pretty good sweet. We'll see how it stacks up with the rest of the stuff, but I can go ahead and recommend this, especially if you like red velvet cake. Yeah, we're just kind of taking in the vibes of Halloween Horror Nights before the sun goes down. We're um, in a, what do they call this area? Geometry Park, I think. Anyway, you got the Twilight Tavern over here, which is themed after the monsters. You got the famous Twisted Taters. They always have these at Horror Nights. It's pretty much just potato chips on a stick and seasoned. Let's see what else we have. So we're filming tonight at the Premium Scream event where food is free, so we are trying as much as we can. Um, they are running out of some stuff though, so we gotta be kinda quick. Uh, so let's see what we're coming up upon. Over here we got the two Ghostbusters booths. So Frozen Empire, I believe here we got a couple of Korean style dogs. Yep, we got a Slimer Korean dog. Let me show you the menu here. The Slimer Korean dog. We got the mini Stay Puff S'more and Class V concoction. Oh, also the Frozen Death Chill. Korean corn dog dip. Mint cheesecake. The facade of Ghostbusters is pretty cool. And then you got a New York deli next to it, Ivan's New York deli. That's probably Ivan, like Ivan Reitman, who's obviously involved with Ghostbusters. And over here you got the mini Stay Puff s'mores and the frozen death chili again. So you got both over here. Here we are at Eats and Treats, which I believe is at the Twilight Tavern. You get inside the fog fish and chips, forbidden falafel, and bird's cake, chocolate coated three tiered vanilla cake with raspberry jam. We're probably gonna try the fish and chips. Let's see how they stack up the Epcot. And here we have the appropriately named In the Fog Fish and Chips. This is just battered fish and chips. So we're gonna see how this stacks up to Epcot. And from the Twilight Tavern as well, we got the Bride Cake. I think I call it the Bird Cake in my other videos, so it's the Bride Cake, it's not a Bird Cake. Looks like the Bride of Frankenstein. Chocolate coated three tier vanilla cake with raspberry jam. This one is $6.99 and the fish and chips are a whopping $16.99. So they better pack a good punch on taste because that's expensive. All right, I can't find a fork anywhere, so we're gonna use the knife for the fish and chips. We can improvise, we got a little knife going on. Fish and chips, inside the fog, fish and chips I should say. Uh, let's see how it stacks up to Epcot. I'm not gonna dip it in tartare sauce, I'll just try it without, let's see. So the batter, with my improvised fork, the batter's sweet, a little sweeter than Epcot. Um, like a donut, kind of just like a donut with fish in it, um, but it's good. It's sweet fish and chips. Um, I'm gonna put a little lemon on it. So they give you a lemon. I didn't see any malt, malt vinegar, which would probably be appropriate, but I squeeze a little lemon on it. And now I'm gonna do tartar and lemon, let's see. So the tartar sauce is, you know, just tartar sauce, but I actually think the lemon helped it out. I'd probably put the lemon on this, but uh, you know, with any food you get, what we like to do, and you should do, try it without anything, then dip it, and then add some lemon to it and see what tastes better. I think I prefer it with the lemon, personally. All right, so I'm wearing my Frankenstein shirt, right? Hopefully you can see him. And we're gonna have some bride cake. I don't know if that's morbid in the monster world, but we'll go with it. Um, I don't have a fork, like I said, they're out of forks in this general area, so I'm just gonna take the spoon here and grab some of this cake, and let's see how it is. So let me cut into this cake. The cake is green inside. Here you go, green cake, got some whipped cream hanging off there. The outer shell's crunchy, not soft. Um, so when I got into the cake itself, it's green inside and it kind of chunked off into crumbs. I'm gonna try it.
So it's definitely vanilla cake as advertised, right? It's a three layer vanilla cake. I think there's raspberry in it. It must be in the middle though. I didn't get to it yet. Let me, I'm gonna dig in a little, let's see. Oh yeah, so way in there, you probably can't see it. There's raspberry, so. Is that supposed to be her brain? Blood. I think that's her brain, blood. Um, I'm gonna call it raspberry jam, it's not her brain. Let's just try it. I dug out some raspberry jam from the inside of the bride cake. Yeah, it's vanilla cake with raspberry. So for seven bucks, um, I think we reviewed the so far the cake pop from the Insidious booth. And this one, the Insidious booth cake pop probably tastes better. But this one kind of looks cooler, so I'll kind of leave it up to you. They're both the same price. The fish and chips, going back to that, a little overpriced for fish and chips, I would say. They're good, but they're expensive. All right, we're heading over to Torture Fair, one of the screen, uh, scare zones. Let's see what kind of mischief we get into. We got a lot of fog in here. It's starting to get dark, so the effects are coming out. We got like a pyramid head looking person coming right at me. Looks like we got a little bit of a torture show going on here. It's a Renaissance fair gone wrong. We got a lot of fog going on here. I'll see if I can lure a scare actor here with me. They got a scare actor back there. It's always so much fun around here. Let's see what else we can find in here. I'll just kind of take you down the streets of New York, which has been taken over by a Renaissance Fair gone wrong. creeper back there. We got symbols on the ground. <laughs> We're in the fog and we are loving it. <laughs> Let's see what's going on over here. <laughs> Is it aged? Just a bit. Oh, it's aged, just how I like it. Try the cherry cobbler. Apparently, the cherry cobbler is good too. All right, it's enough of the tortured fair business. All right, we're gonna go into a quiet place, which has got a five-minute wait. Cannot wait to check this one out. I've heard good things about it. We're gonna experience it. This area is always a cool photo. They light up the New York facade with the emblem of the year. So it says HHN 33. Halloween Horror Nights 33. And of course, it's on the Public Library in New York. Here is Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, which is boasting a 15 minute wait. And so we're gonna test it out. Let's see how it is. We just got out of Ghostbusters Frozen Empire and it was awesome. We'll give it a four out of five. That's kind of how we rank the mazes based on the level of scares, the detail in the environment, and the overall just, did we have fun in there? 
Ghostbusters is more of a fun maze, so there's not too much gore in there, like none at all. A lot of Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, the little guys, which are cute. There's a really big reveal scene in there that's really cool. Uh, I won't spoil it, just in case you don't like spoilers, but uh, we definitely enjoyed the maze. A lot of good details from the Frozen Empire movie. You, know, you got some really cool cameos from some of the ghost inspectors in there, so can't wait to go on this one again. All right, we're gonna try Insidious the Further, one of our favorite horror franchises. All four of the movies are decent. 15 minute wait. So let's get on here and check it out. The New York City Public Library always looks so good this time of year. Halloween Horror Night 33. All right, we're gonna try Triplets of Terror. We don't have a lot of uh, history on this one as it's an original, but it's about a trio that are celebrating their birthday kind of in a gruesome way. So we're gonna check it out and see how it is versus some of the other stuff we've been on that have been IP related. So let's check out this original maze. All right, so we just did Insidious and Triplets of Terror. Oh my goodness, Insidious is such a great maze. Um, we kind of rank these every night as we go on them, and I am going to give that one a five. We're going to probably go on it again because it's the premium scream night and everything's a walk-on. Triplets of Terror, though, we're going to have to go on Triplets of Terror again, and we're going to have to reevaluate it because as of now, we have it at a two out of five. Um, our favorite character, though, is Junior. <laughs> and so I'm kind of reviewing these as I walk through the tortured bear scare zone. So I got a lot of stuff going on around me. But yeah, Insidious is great. That's a cool maze. Highly recommend checking out Insidious. Triplets of Terror, if it's a short way, check it out. Oh, right, let's see. Let's see what we got going on here. What are we selling? I can always lend you a hand. <laughs> do you guys do you guys serve tongue? I have a piece of leg with a rat on it. Oh. They only judge. <laughs> oh yeah, that sounds really delicious actually. This one, but it's brand new. this one looks like it's seen better days. Do you here. ever get headaches? I get massive headaches. Well, this really relieves the head. This one fixes headaches. <laughs> All right, that fixes Get headaches. Inside, if you're looking for headache relief, Halloween Horror Nights, the torture fair. Bye. All right, we're just wandering the streets of Halloween Horror Nights. It's only about 9.40 and there's nobody here. This feels like an Orlando Informer meetup where there's just not very many lines, except this is Horror Nights. Like, I'm at Halloween Horror Nights with no wait. No people. This is awesome. Um, we're gonna be here tomorrow night, an opening night, and it'll be a lot more crowded. The premium scream event is completely worth the money. We're about to check out Major Suites now, which is just posting a five minute wait. I'm gonna guess it's a walk on. But yeah, we're at Horror Nights with like zero wait, free food, this is total heaven. Anyways, we're approaching Major Suites. Five minute wait, Major Suites, Sweet Factory which is based off of a scare zone from a couple of years ago. So we're really looking forward to this one. The scare zone was awesome. We just got off a of major sweet sweet factory and um, we're gonna have to go on that one a couple of times. It um, kind of took a different turn on us than what we kind of expected it maybe should have been. I was kind of expecting it to be a little more whimsical at first and then turn maybe sour. Um, I think right now I'm rating it around a two out of five or a three. I did like the, miss, the Mrs. Treats uh, character is pretty cool. The Major Sweets character is pretty cool, but the overall maze probably could use a little more whimsical candy factory kind of feel. But uh, so we're gonna go on it a couple more times and we'll see if our opinion changes. For now, I think it's a two out of five. And now we're approaching the Blumhouse Scare Zone. I see the grabber. I'm gonna, I got the grabber back there. I'm trying to ring you on the phone, but nothing. We got the grabber. I think we got a pinball over here. Pinball Vance. Got pinball Vance. This is the great thing about the premium scream event, as I keep saying, there's nobody here, so the scare actors actually can creep up on you and scare you, which is cool. Lots of fog over here in the Blum House. It's a scary zone. I got a creeper right here in the middle. I don't know if you can see him here. Just kind of dancing in the fog. This is the cool effect, the fog and the, the lights. There he is. You look lovely today. More fog. I think I see a baby face killer in the fog. Let's see. Oh, there he 
there's one. <laughs> that was really cool looking. That's the Blumhouse scare zone behind us with lots of fog and not very many people tonight. Let me get your good side, thank you. Little Major Sweets confections are here. We got an African lentil and potatoes sambusa coffin, African spice lentils and potatoes, and a vegan pie dough, sour cherry lemonade boba. That sounds actually kind of good. I'm gonna see if they have that one actually. Let's see if that's part of the, the free. Let's try it. Okay, you know what? The sour cherry lemonade boba is not something I would spend $10 on, but it's free tonight, so let's try it. I just rolled up and ordered this big bad boy, so I'm gonna try it. I like boba. I like lemonade, I like cherry, so I'm pretty sure this will taste good. Oh, I got a boba. Careful on that. Oh, there's also Sprite in it. And I got a visitor. Uh, I think I'm part of the purge now, but at least I can get my boba tea. So I recommend the Blumhouse Scare Zone. The boba tea is pretty good. It's got lemonade and cherry and a little Sprite. But watch out for the bobas. They come up the straw pretty quick. We found this guy over here looks a little tired. I don't know. He looks like he needs a little, oh, oh, he got us. <laughs> Always fun in the scare zones. Yeah, we've got a vacancy here. There's always room for another. I'll see you in the fog, literally. Okay, we stopped by the Goblin Food Booth, which is over by Men in Black, kind of in the middle of the water. And there's, <laughs> I wasn't going to get it because I'm not really a turkey leg fan, but this is a turkey wing. And I'm going to show you later when I when I try to eat this how big this actually is. This doesn't do it justice. And then it doesn't come with this pie, but we ordered the uh, goblin apple pie, which based on the description is going to taste hopefully better than a McDonald's apple pie, but it kind of looks like one. It's a little bigger. And then over here we have pumpkin guts. This is butternut and zucchini squash. And it's actually served in an acorn squash, if you can see that down there. So we're gonna dig into these and let's see what they taste like. They smell good actually. It's kind of like comfort food territory here with the goblin food. So let's try them. All right, let's try this turkey wing. I told you it was big. It's about this big. <laughs> so this thing's massive. It smells good to be fair. I'm not much of a turkey leg person, but Let's have a turkey wing. I'm going to bite right into this. It won't be appetizing, but I'm going to do it anyway. All right, at first try, I couldn't even separate the skin from it. So let me try again. So it's really chewy. The skin's really tough, but the sauce is spicy. Um, not that spicy, it's like theme park spicy. And it's good, and to be expected, turkey doesn't really have a, to me, a great taste, so it's just okay. It kind of tastes like a chicken wing. I'm glad I tried it, it's a little spicy, like I said. The meat itself's a little bland because it's turkey. All right, we got pumpkin guts, which is also from the, the Goblin booth. This is zucchini and butternut squash noodles, which I'm a fan of, typically. And it's served in like an acorn squash thing, so we got all sorts of veganness going on here, which is fine. And it's got vegan butter in it too, by the way. All right, so at first taste, all I taste is the squash. I don't really taste the butter. Let me try again. It's kind of plain, so I don't know if I would get this one again. Turkey leg um, actually tastes better than this one. I'm try I'm gonna give this one more one more heaping spork or forkful. So I just scratched the acorn squash. I got some zucchini in here, I got some butternut. Yeah. I don't think I like this one. And now we have the goblin apple pie. I have high hopes that this will taste pretty good though, so let's bite into it. Apple cinnamon, good crunch. This one's good. So if we're gonna go over to the booth, this one was $6.99, I believe. And probably my favorite dessert. So far we've had Stay Puft Marshmallow Man s'mores. We had the bride cake. 
I think that's all we've had on desserts. So this is, oh, and we also had the, the key, the red key pop, cake pop. This one's better than all of those. So I do recommend this from the Goblin, Goblin food stand. It is good. Better than McDonald's, like I told you earlier. It looks like it, but it's bigger. And it does taste better. It's nice and warm. I could use a little vanilla ice cream, but I won't gripe. I highly recommend. All right, we're in the, in the very back of the park. And we're gonna check out Universal Monsters, Eternal Bloodlines, and Goblin Feast. They're both on the same sign. They're in the brand new tents, so I'm not sure how far of a journey this is to get to the entrance of the mazes, but it is a five minute wait. It may be a five or 10 minute walk though, so we're gonna get in there. Going into the brand new Sprung Tents, which is where Universal Eternal Bloodlines and Goblin Feast is. So there's a little entrance here. For reference, the old Sprung Tents, which they're still using, are way back over there. I don't know if you can see them, but they're over there. These two new tents look massive though. I can't film in the house, but I can show you the outside of the tent before we go in there. It's a walk-on, so I'll just do it real quick from here. I don't know if you can see the size of that tent, but you can see the people way back there. This is Bloodlines, and then next to it is also Goblin Feast over there. So They're both five minute waits, so we're just going to kind of do them both while we're back here. Uh, it's kind of majestic looking to see all these queues here with nobody in them. This will not be the case, obviously, on opening night or, or any of the nights, but we're heading towards the two mazes. We can't film inside, of course, so I'm going to put the camera away, but I just kind of wanted to show you the empty queue area for Goblin Feast on the left and Universal Monsters on the right. Oh, we got a little bit of a queue over here. Let's see if I can zoom in on the queue of Goblin Feast way over there. You can kind of see the facade. It's kind of cool. Goblin Hut, maybe? All right, let's get in there. We just got out of Goblin's Feast and Universal Monsters Eternal Bloodlines, which are both next to each other in two new sprung tents. And I um, got to say, the Goblin Feast one took us by surprise. It's a lot of fun. It's cool. The set pieces are big and, and thought out. And um, even cooler is the Goblins have different personas. Like there's old ones and female ones and male ones and big ones and small ones. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, I think might be our favorite maze. That one in Insidious so far tonight. Um, Universal Monsters Eternal Bloodlines is very beautiful sets. Um, I can't believe I'm saying this, but there's a she mummy in there. Spoiler alert, sorry. I'm just happy I can say she mummy. Um, when we watched the, the lore about it and they mentioned that there's a she wolf, I was like, where's the she mummy? It's there. Um, I won't spoil anymore, but um, we enjoyed Eternal Bloodlines a lot. Um, the two mazes back here are pretty decent, so um, it's worth the trek to come back here to both of them. But the Goblin one right now has got our heart. It's uh, kind of feels like a Yeti maze um, in the making, except it's goblins. So. All right, we're gonna try out Slaughter Cinema 2. The highly anticipated sequel to the maze from 2017, 2018, which of course gave birth to the Yetis. Let's see if this maze happens to give birth to anything. Game partner. Little Slaughter Cinema 2 trailer. Bunch of B-rated films. Of course, they show you a bunch of trailers while you're waiting in line. <laughs> Pretty cool. The Hatchet Change Demon, the Bounty Hunters. Some of these we'll see in the maze and some we won't. We'll watch one more before we go through it. Here's another trailer. Museum property, handle with right, kids. Easy, 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 right? What right. the hell's inside this thing, anyway? It's decoration. It's for the new club. Well, what kind of decoration? Well, it looks like it's some kind of Egyptian theme. Oh, I see. So, like, a gift from the museum. All right, let's well, get in there. A gift. All right, we're going to try a museum. Deadly exhibits. Five minute wait. Let's get on this one. It's about a museum that's kind of being taken over by, I don't know if it's a curse or probably a curse. Let's get in there and find out. We found the Slaughter Cinema snack bar. Looks like we're gonna try the walking taco here. It's kind of legendary in this hot dog. Maybe next time. Definitely the walking taco. This is the happy face of somebody with a walking taco. We got a walking taco. Let's see what's in it. Can you see it in there? There's a whole bunch of taco goodness with Doritos. I was a big fan of this one last year. 
Can't wait to dig in. It's $13.99 and it is a walking taco. We're at the Triplets of Terror themed booth. We got the Say Cheeseburger. The Bloody Goodie Bag. I'm gonna get the Sibling Sweet Sampler. And then they got a lot of different alcoholic beverages here. We're not gonna try any of those, of course. But we're probably gonna try the burger for sure. Here is the Say Cheeseburger from the Triplets of Terror food booth, which is actually nowhere near the house. You know, it's on the other side of the park by the Simpsons. Can't wait to dig in and try this one. And also from the Triplets of Terror house is the goodie bag. It's fries and chicken and some veggies. I'm gonna try this one out too. So for the goodie bag, which is like fries and chicken, I'm just gonna kind of grab a fork here and let's get a piece of chicken. Some veggies on here, and a fry. Mm, kind of has a tang to it, like a buffalo sauce. I guess this is chicken fries instead of pizza fries, so I think that's what they're going for. Kind of like fried stuff in here. Not bad. So I had to get the say cheeseburger. I actually took off the little happy birthday thing that's on here too, but um. It's a cute little bun and a, kind of a big patty under there, so I'm just gonna go in for it. That's good, it's got a lot of cheese in it. If I remember right from the menu, it's got like triple cheese. The, the burger is actually very juicy and fresh, although they just made this one, so, you know, your miles may vary on the freshness, but it's very fresh and the bread's really soft and it's got a really good cheese kind of baked on the bread, so this one is good. It's really cheesy. I love cheese, cheese cheesy cheese burgers. Yes, I can say cheesy cheeseburgers. Um, do recommend this one, if you can see in there. The patty's actually pretty big. You probably can't see it. It's a little dark anyway. Um, the patty's like bigger than the bun, which I do like. You get a good meat taste when they do that. So recommend the say cheeseburger. The tarp or the flag or tapestry, whatever you want to call it for nightmare fuel, nocturnal circus. Here we go into the next scare zone. This swamp of the undead, I think. This one usually has a ton of fog in it. See you in the fog. You're gonna see me in the fog. Let's turn you back around and check out the scare zone. Got some good scenery in here in Central Park, converted into a swamp. Uh-oh, we might be trapped. Hello. Oh, we got some creepy little doll-looking people in here. Looks like we might be coming out of the swamp. I think we made it through the swamp. And we made it out. We're about to enter Demon Queens. We are being summoned into the portal of Demon Queens. I think I must go this way. It looks like this is happening. I'm going in the Demon Queens. We got lots of fog and demons in Demon Queens. Hopefully I don't get sucked up into this portal here. They're kind of luring me into these like corners of the area. I don't know. I'm just gonna kind of move on. I like the lighting effect in this scare zone. It's really cool. And of course the scare actors. We got lots of them. We got this portal in the middle where I think they do kind of a seance dancey thing. It's not going on right now. We got a lot of scare actors in this zone, which is great. I really like the lighting in this zone. It's awesome. This scare zone's always got cool lighting effects every year. Last year it was kind of a zodiac thing. This year it's like a, well, demon queens. We got lots of demons. 
Even the float in the middle here has got some cool lighting effects on it. I like the lighting effect around this end. We are in duality of fear. We got lots of chainsaws around here. I don't see surreal or sinister out at this time. But we are going to head over to Ghostbusters for another run. Uh oh, I got another chainsaw guy coming. We're going into the quiet place like food area. We're going to see if they have their little pastry here. But I just kind of wanted to show you this guy. He's kind of cool. This is the quiet place area. It's like in this little alleyway over in New York. And we're going to see what they have. I can hear you. This is the silent place food. They have Abbott Farm corn chowder, probably a little too hot for soup tonight for me. <laughs> Millbricks, baked beans, and the wooden board eclair. Well, unfortunately, they're out of that. That's the one we wanted to try. But you know, it's about 1.30 in the evening, so that's what happens. So we're waiting for some corn chowder in the quiet place to be made. So let's talk about a couple of the mazes we did. Um, since the last time we reviewed them, we did Slaughter Cinema 2 and Museum Deadly Exhibit. And so Slaughter Cinema 2 was a lot of fun. Just a lot of B-rated movies. Everywhere you turn was a new movie. I'm not sure how many were in there. There's a lot. Um, I think there was one called Chum and Bait. I really like that one, but you're talking to somebody, you know, I love Jaws. We all know this. Um, so the Chum and Bait one had a massive shark in it, maybe. It was awesome. Um, kind of like the rock and roll area I, I forget the name of that that movie but it's kind of like the mascot for the the year kind of the spiky hair skull person so that part was cool and then a uh, museum deadly exhibit was actually pretty cool you could tell that the story was kind of progressing as you went through the maze and you know there's a lot of enchanted items in there or they're cursed items or, or however you know i think the the main antagonist of the of the maze is a rotting stone and it kind of inhibits and takes over different beings in there so we kind of rank both of those mazes a three out of five uh, slaughter cinema probably edges out museum but you know we want to go through it a couple more times during the season and see how it uh, kind of evolves and goes so anyways so from in front of the quiet place food area, that's uh, our last two mazes to review. Actually, we got one more maze to go on. We haven't gotten a monstrous yet, so we're gonna head over there and finish out our night on that maze. All right, since it's super late, we decided to try the Abbott Farm corn chowder, which sounds good and they still had it, which is good. It's a creamy stew with shrimp, corn, and vegetables. So this one smells very good, actually. Can't wait to dig it and let's check it out. All right, here's the corn chowder. I'll kind of hold it up, but it's dripping. Actually, I won't hold it up. But what I'll do is I'm gonna get some shrimp on here, some veggies, and some of the corn chowder. Let's try it. This one's really good. This one rivals the cheeseburger as one of our favorites of the evening. Highly recommend it. The only problem with chowder in Florida is it's a little hot here. So eating chowder is going to make me sweat, but you know what? It's so good, I don't care. Bon appetit. Okay, we just got out of our last maze of the evening, buzzer beater, which was Monstros. This is uh, Latin America themed. And uh, that was really cool. It's a maze they brought over from Halloween Horror Nights Hollywood. That was a huge hit there. It'll probably be a huge hit here too, because it's really good. I don't want to spoil any of the big surprises in the maze, but uh, there's some big surprises in the maze that are pretty awesome. Uh, you all know what I mean by that when you get to it. So uh, we gave that one a four out of five, I think. So we'll have to do a, a recap maybe of all, all the mazes. I'll have to take a look at my rating scale, but um, thinking about it right now, definitely the ones that stick in my mind are Ghostbusters, Goblins, surprisingly, Insidious, and uh, Monstros. So those are kind of the ones that kind of stick with me. Um, Slaughter Cinema 2 and Universal Monsters are kind of in that next category and A Quiet Place is probably there. And then um, kind of in that bottom category is Major Sweets and Triplets of Terror. So it'll be kind of interesting to see how all of these 
kind of mature or, or grow as the year goes on. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Let's take a look at some of the merchandise, the shirt, yeah, the coffee mug, the May shirt, which we're gonna have to pick up like we do each year. Uh, Ghostbusters items over here, Frozen Empire. Ooh, Ghostbuster spirit jersey. It's too warm in Florida for us to buy spirit jerseys, but we like looking at them, of course. And of course, you got the main, the main icon. I guess it's not really the icon, but they're using this for uh, all sorts of promotional items. The eyeball is kind of cool. Uh, little Boo's taking on a whole life of his own with merchandising. Such a cute little guy. The Chucky popcorn bucket. Uh, little Boo backpacks. Uh, little Boo clutches. Little Boo lanyards. Little Boo pins. Oh, that's kind of cool. We got a Little Boo and the skeleton dude. I'm sure he has a name, but... Oh, here we go. Blumhouse. That's cool. The, the grabber on there. Little Boo pants. We got a little pillow. Tank top. Oh, quiet place. That's kind of cool. I don't wear cotton shirts too much here in Florida, but they look cool. Got some more Frozen Empire here. Got some black light effects going on with the shirts here. Really like the way that this artwork pops. This one. Kind of like the shoulder bag thing down here. Let's take it out. I kind of like this one. This one may come home with us. I can put some of our vlogging camera equipment in there probably. So I may come back for that. Stay tuned. And more shirts. Insidious stuff. You can get a creepy headband so you two can dance with the tulips. Or tiptoe through the tulips, I should say. With the headband on, it's not creepy at all. Major Sweets got some candy here. Kind of like the branding on the candy. Uh, some really cool artwork on Major Sweets over there. And we got this one. Oh, you got the, the red creature on a shirt. That's not creepy at all. We'll just kind of keep it there for a minute. So yeah, this is the, the main merchandise area, of course, in Halloween Horror Nights. All right, that concludes our Halloween Horror Nights edition of our vlog. Our Disney kind of life, I'm a little tired. We did a lot today. It's the premium scream night. There wasn't very many people here, which was awesome. I heard there was maybe 3,000 people here. We didn't even feel it. Uh, we walked on every maze. I think the longest one was maybe five minutes. Um, we tried so much food, um, I'm super full. I don't even think I have to eat tomorrow. I know I don't have to try a lot of food though when we come back, which is nice that we got it all out of the way tonight. Um, the premium scream night, I don't really need to sell it to anybody. It's totally worth the price. Um, maybe in our written blog, we'll do a breakdown of how much money we would have spent eating everything we ate. Now, typically we don't eat as much as you just saw me eat, you know, and, and I shared it, um, but it was a lot of food. Um, I think the corn chowder actually lasts the longest in my memory on how good it was. It's also the last thing we ate. Um, the say cheese cheeseburger is very good. Maze wise, you know, I kind of broke them all down, but I really enjoyed, oh, really enjoyed Ghostbusters and Goblins, probably at the top of our list. Insidious was good. Horror Nights is just good overall. We're so happy to be back into the fog. We missed it since last year, since November. Hope you all enjoyed it. You know, we're. We're mostly Disney centric, but we love Universal Studios too, and we especially love Halloween Horror Nights. And I really hope you guys enjoyed our little sneak peek into the fog, and we will see you next time. Or I should say, we'll see you in the fog from Disney Kind of Life. We'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe and hit notify and like on this video if you like this kind of content. We appreciate it, we really do. Thank you. So I know I already did our closing video, but we are the last two people out of Horror Nights. I just want to claim that um, they're sweeping us because uh, we're taking too long on our closing video. So um, we are getting swept for the first time ever. Last two people out of the park. Anyways, we'll see you in the fog.